The opinions you hear on this show are those of the host and the hosts only. They are not shared by YouTube or by any of our following sponsors. So enjoy while we either bring you excitement, entertainment, or just straight up piss you off. <laughs> you are now listening to RJV TV. RJV TV. RJV TV. Sports, music, film, entertainment, fashion, gaming, technology, and even politics. Yeah, we'll talk about it. <laughs> You are now listening to RJV TV. And we are officially back with one more episode of RJV TV. Ready to uh, launch this third episode of the show here on this YouTube channel. With Rian. Yeah, we hope that you guys have been enjoying the programming. We know the last program came out a little long. Uh, I think it was like an hour and 20 minutes or something like that. We got a little extensive. Uh, and that was thanks to Mighty Cyrus's twerking. Yeah, she took forever to twerk. So. Yeah, yeah, that 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 twerking really uh, messed up our schedule. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but in reality, uh, it was a very long show. Our our intent isn't to try and and do something so long for you guys that it'll bore you. Uh, we want to keep you guys entertained to the fullest, and uh, that's what we're trying to do here. Uh, but what we're gonna start off with because I want to jump right into it. Um, it's not gonna be an entertaining topic. It's just something that's going on right now. Uh, you can never put these two things uh, together, entertainment and the topic that we're about to bring up. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> Ariel Castro, for these those who have been living under a rock and apparently are very, very blind to what's been going on in the world. Ariel Castro is uh, the monster yeah. uh, that held three women captive in Ohio, uh, kidnapped them around the age of 14, kept them. For many years, a decade. Uh, yeah, a decade. A, whole decade. a decade worth of time. One of them was about where he, 30, I think. where he constantly uh, raped them, mm-hmm. uh, beat them down to cause any miscarriages, and a lot. Uh, I mean, the guy was evil. The they guy they was said the guy. they found like over like five fetuses. Yeah, around the whole basement area where they were captive, and yeah, the the guy the guy was beyond evil. It was it's terrible to even. Imagine that um, such a human exists or existed because the point of this topic is because the man committed suicide. Um, just, I mean, he, he just got sentenced about, what, three months ago? Yeah. I believe it was like three months ago three that months he got ago. sentenced. He couldn't take three months in a cell uh, to what he gave over a decade to women. Mm-hmm. And, and, and even the... The county prosecutor um, for Cuyahoga, which is where uh, this all took place, uh, he quoted this. This man couldn't take for even a month a small portion of what he had dished out for over a decade. That's not even a point two of a tenth of a percentage of what he did for can't, fucking. Can't ten, even measure the difference in ten, time, you know, and, for and, and, and ten years. It's it's incredible. I mean, and um. It's sad. It's sad to to believe that this man was possible to was was even able to do mm-hmm. what he did, you know. And this is a guy who had to plead guilty to nine hundred and thirty seven counts of rape. He was sentenced for life plus an additional thousand years in case he somehow survived life, which I don't know. I I, I don't know how you add a thousand gotta, years. That to dude got to die, get buried in the cell, and left there, and get buried again. Taking out the casket, put into another casket, and buried again. You see my face, man. I'm disgusted by this. You're like seriously, like no, the, the guy. The guy is right. yeah, yeah. The guy is a uh, uh, a terrible person that that death definitely a lot of people felt deserved. He's a coward, yeah. Uh, death sentence, and yeah, he's a coward uh, for taking that easy way out mm-hmm. uh, instead of dealing with the consequences of his actions. But uh, but yeah, he definitely uh, took that coward's death and committed suicide. Uh, inside of his prison cell 
uh, the trippy part is that we spoke about off air before we got on this now is the yeah. whole thing that supposedly had guards watching him every 30 minutes. Now it's going to be an issue now. Yeah. Um, now it's going to be that. that That's going to be what we're going to hear a lot about is uh, the questioning of uh, the supervision of Ariel Castro. Because obviously there's a lot of people happy with the fact that the guy is dead. Oh, word. I mean, uh, but at the same time, uh, you have to understand that... Um, there is protocol here. You have to follow the regulations, and the regulations was this guy got sentenced to prison time, not death. He got sentenced to prison time till death, mm. and um, that's his punishment. Yeah, that, that was that was going to be his punishment, yeah. right? And at at the end of the day, this guy was so badly supervised mm-hmm. that he was able to commit suicide. That should not happen to somebody who's getting guarded every 30 minutes yeah. with a guard coming by that should not happen a- at all and, and at this point it starts becoming the question of if they allowed him to do this they wanted him he wanted, they and, wanted him to and die. uh and this can actually cause an issue an because issue, yeah. now th- this can become uh a- a- an issue with how this was uh managed and how this was taken care of because uh it's illegal to really allow somebody to kill yeah. themselves like that it's not it's not a Suppose, how you handle the prison yeah the prison way suppose statement was they found him lynched and uh they tried to do cpr no cpr there and cpr on the way to the hospital pronounced yeah. dead i mean i don't get it so well th- this is what uh what um the defense attorney jay shallot uh told uh the daily news earlier on wednesday uh uh, Shalit said state pre- prison officials provided no details about his client's grim fate and could not say for certain whether Castro offed himself. I don't deal with speculation, he said, but asked if he had concerns uh, if his clients uh, about his client's supervision. And his reply was he didn't make it 30 days. Did he? What does that tell you? And it, it's definitely something you have to put into into some kind of thought i mean if this guy wasn't able to withstand 30 days and offed himself in 30 days what kind of you know guard was going on there like well, how, how were they watching him i'm trying to see this in a double view like you know good and bad or just evil and evil but the way i look at it is either they wanted him to off himself so that i like, just go ahead do what you going to watch you just do what you need to do because you ain't you worthless or he was getting. They, they made sure this dude got mistreated, raped, beat on. They they pissed on him. Like just being vulgar about it. Just be honest yeah. with it. You know what I mean? They they let him have it in there, so he just offed him so he didn't want to do it anymore. No well, I mean, it's it could either be, or. You could was, think both ways. Wasn't you know he I mean? like in solitary? He was in solitary too. So yeah. I'm just thinking out the box a little bit as my in, opinion. In solitary for viewers. confinement in that sense that your outside time is done alone. Like it's everything's done, alone. Everything, everything is private. Cell everything alone, is private yeah, exactly. alone. Phone calls alone. Dinners alone. Outside time. So if anybody alone. caused any kind of mistreatment, it'd be the guards, the, the themselves, guards themselves. And there goes the issue. Mm-hmm. Uh if and not that we're trying to defend this guy. I mean this guy was, this guy uh and we're online so I can use the language. This guy was a dick. You yeah, know, bro. he was a dick. He's evil. <laughs> yeah. He's he, he deserves to die. And you know, it's uh, and I'm s i am I apologize. Yeah, I, I, I know you. it's not the right I, thing I dig, to say. I dig what you're saying. It's not the right thing to say about anybody, but this is a guy that really deserved uh what came to him. Uh, for what he did so it, it's really one of those situations where you kind of have to be happy that the guy offed himself but at the same time you have to be upset with the fact that this guy is not going to go through the same pain that, that he, he caused. that he caused to these girls uh i mean three women at the age of 14 snatched up and for a decade kept in a small room similar to the size of a cell chained down and constantly being raped. This guy did not receive one inch of that punishment. Mm-hmm. Not even one bit. There's no way in 30 days they can fit the kind of punishment that this guy deserved. So at that point, that's where you get upset about it. And you have to wonder about that supervision. How well did they guard him? What was he allowed to have in there that allowed him to hang himself? Yeah. I mean that those cells are supposed to be made in a way where somebody cannot do that. He did it with one of his sheets, supposedly. No, yeah, yeah. No, I know he did it with one of his sheets, but that's the thing. Like in those situations, 
what do they do? They take the sheets out. Yep. They don't give you anything that you can use. Nothing at all. When they have a feeling that you can cause harm you can, to yourself, they, yeah, you can cause harm to yourself, and you possibly commit suicide, they take anything that can be used as a weapon out. Even utensils, you don't shoots. have to eat with your exactly. damn hands. Even the sheets, yeah. everything, Laces, it all gets anything. taken out. Yeah. Everything gets taken out. This guy was given his sheets. He was out of off himself, and that's where it comes into question. So, at this point, you know, thank. I, no, I wasn't gonna say that. Let me not say that word. Thankfully, the guy is gone. Bon voyage, Baba. <laughs> Thankfully, the guy is gone. He's going to deal with the consequences wherever he ends up, which I'm, I'm pretty sure we all know where he's going to end oh, up. Oh, we all know that. But, uh, we won't but all that in though. all, I mean, uh, a lot of people feel like this guy should have suffered more. Way more. Way more uh, in a jail cell. Willpower. It ain't there. Ma- mental. Well, in a prison cell, my bad. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, so all in all, that that's, that's what it is. And... Uh, Really wanted to get it off my chest when it came to this guy, cause that's that's the one news that's more uh, off of everything that we're gonna talk about in today's a, a, show. A little bit too serious, just yeah. a tad. But, yeah, it's a little too serious, but, but it must be talked about. It must be talked about exactly. So with that in mind, well, with that being said, mm-hmm. uh, we're gonna go to our first break here on RJV TV. We'll be back with a little bit of what's going on in the sports world. Because, yes, man, things are getting very interesting. And we'll be back right after this break. Are you looking for a place to promote your product, company, or event? Well, you have found the perfect place. RJV TV is the show for you and whatever you want to promote. RJV TV is one of the fastest growing internet TV shows on the net. RJV TV guarantees results, so don't miss out on this great opportunity. Promote your product, company, or event right here on RJV TV. For more information, call 786 262 4741. 786 262 4741 or email rjv.tvshow at gmail.com. Back here on RJV TV, continuing the program, and uh, we're going to jump right into the next topic, and uh, it's going to be NBA basketball. Yes, sir. And, uh, man, there's a lot of things going on, even though the season hasn't even started. There's a lot of things going on that we got to talk about. Right off the bat, J.R. Smith. Suspended for five games. Why? Because he got high. He was trying to play basketball, but he couldn't because he got high. Dude loves it, yo. I think his it's, it's, it's standby time is marijuana, yo. It's not even basketball. Do you think off time, what do I do? I get high. high. Right. I'm just saying. The marijuana. He violated the substance abuse policy of the NBA, tested positive for marijuana, therefore now suspended for five games, which probably doesn't bother him much, though it'll hurt his pocket a slight bit, but only hurts no pay, him right? five games out of the 82. So you have another 77 to play. And if they make the playoffs. And plus some. So uh, I don't think he cares too much about the suspension, and he probably thinks Carmelo can handle it. Well, it's not the first time, so he must not really care. So Yeah. As of last year, he got hung over and he didn't play any good after that. So <laughs> yeah, what it's it is, right? Fun. It's always fun when you have a player who likes to get hung over. Uh, <laughs> but speaking of drugs, Lamar Odom <laughs> leaves rehab after only one day. Crack. <laughs> this is a guy who got pulled over for drunk driving after he got caught driving under the speed limit. And not just slightly under. Not just a little bit under. No, he was driving beyond under. He was tortoise <laughs> under. He was tortoise <laughs> under in the speed. Dude limit. had a shell on him. Okay, and uh, and he got pulled over. He got arrested for that, and uh, went to rehab, and only after one day, exited the building. <laughs> and there is no way that in, <laughs> I believe it's possible for somebody to be rehabilitated Clean? from crack in one <laughs> day. The- I mean, I can't see that happening. I can't see you going in and <laughs> withdraw. <laughs> oh, I'm done. 
Hank Chase, the sum done. No, it's not gonna happen. Oh no, man. Not not after one day. I, I see him going back though. I'm being real. I mean, I it's either back. gonna be relapse or or something, man. And it's terrible to imagine that this guy can't stay in a rehabilitation center for more than one day, especially with uh with the Lakers. Like uh you have told me off off uh, yeah, camera. The, the Lakers wanted to resign him to come back to the Lakers and but rejoin only, if only if he, because to rehab and clean himself up. That's the only way they're gonna yeah. Accept them back due to the issues. And something I also stated off camera was I just feel my opinion, even though I know you have your own and you feel different about it, but yeah. You know, I just feel like anybody that's been dating any sorts of the siblings of the Kardashians always go cuckoo, yo. So I mean yeah, but see we yeah, we, we had talked about that and I even had mentioned that I, I don't think it's necessarily that. I just think that they combine themselves with people. That have a tendency because Lamar Odom has apparently had issues yeah, in the past. before. Yeah. It's not the first time. But I it's mean, been more of like he, emotional issues, you know what I mean? No, no, but not only that, but he had the marijuana issue before. He had been suspended for marijuana yeah. before. And I'm not one to believe that marijuana is a, a gateway, gateway drug. drug. I don't yeah. believe that. I don't, I, that. I'm yeah. not with that whole concept of, uh, of that. But uh let's say kanye because kanye was one of the examples you gave me yeah at the time and uh, i don't believe kanye, i think kanye's been what he Lost is now it. yeah been a little off a little arrogant mm-hmm. uh the guy will make good music and hence the his company his her whole thing good yeah. music he will make good music not that i believe his yeezus album is good music, good but um he will always be that, but he's a guy who believes he's more than that. He's an arrogant dude, to be honest with yeah, you. Yeah, and, and that's, and that's what he personifies. That's what he shows. That's what, that's his character. He's a character that punches a cameraman because he believes he's better than you. And that it is what it is. And and uh, I, to, for me, I would believe I would punch a cameraman if I got chased around like he did. Oh, dope. Uh, but regardless, like for me, it's that. Like uh, I, I don't believe it's that. It's just... But you don't feel in any sort of way that... I, no, even, because even with Lamar with Odom, Kim, he switched off a bit. No, with Lamar Odom, well, no, with Kim, no. I mean, I, now he's just being more arrogant because he is with Kim. Mm. So he's like, now I got this fine ass, and now she got my baby. So <laughs> the baby's name is Northwest. Yo. You believe this? Well, anyways, uh, continue. But with Lamar Odom, uh, I mean, Lamar Odom, for me. What was his gateway to going downhill was the trade to Dallas or the move to Dallas, at least. When he got moved to Dallas, that's when he completely went downhill. And this is something that, even though I'm not an avid viewer of the Kardashians, but my wife watches them. She watches the Kardashians. And I ran into the episodes where Lamar Odom got moved to Dallas. And he was the press of the the, situation. The depression, the pain that you can see in his face. And suddenly, he just expressed a whole ton of anger towards his wife. Like, everything was just anger. Anything she said, she would say the nicest thing, and he would just... Flip. Sp- he yeah. would spew anger. Like, yeah. all you feel feel off of him is anger, anger, anger. Negative energy because of the, f- the situation. Exactly. And ever since then, he gained all the weight at that time. Okay. He was not willing to play. He got moved to the D League. Then he got practically sent home and paid just to sit his ass at home uh and everything just kept falling more and more down for him and the clipper situation kind of gave him an upside but his he didn't feel at home he wanted to be in a laker Laker uniform and i think that's where you know it's got to hurt more you know you're mad dude you put into perspective this guy was six man of the year for that team he did everything for that team and they just brushed him off so that's what he felt yeah i mean you imagine you in that position oh of course anybody it's gonna gonna be that that negative energy that you feel like nothing bitter grudgeful yeah i mean and uh, i feel like that's what really opened the door for him to really lead himself and have have an escape route exactly because we don't know i mean apparently he's been doing this kind of stuff for a little bit so we don't know what the kardashians say so we don't know since when this has been going on you know, and, and it is what it is, man. I I don't believe that that the, just because he, now he's connected with the Kardashians now is because he got addicted to crack. No, I don't think it has to do with that. Uh, well, but in the end, we'll see what happens, man. I just really well, hope big the ups best to the for dude, him. though, man. Hopefully he cleans up, man, and gets his stuff together. Hopefully he does. We'll see what happens. Now, uh, moving on, NBA will install motion tracking cameras to provide coaches, players, and fans data to show what it takes to succeed 
in basketball's highest level. NBA and STATS, that's STATS in all capital, partner up for the Sports VU cams. Now, if you guys haven't heard about these cameras, they were first used in 2009 for the finals between um, the Lakers and the Magic. Uh, which is the last time the Lakers won a championship? Well, not the last time, but well, the not first the first championship of the two P. Fir- yeah, the first of the two P. But yeah, the 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 Magic and Laker game, um, and that uh, gave a variety of different stats: uh, how many miles each player ran, uh, how many touches each player actually had. Uh, it, it details so many additional stats that um, that it became one of the smartest tools to use especially for coaches because you know you want to be able to manage your team imagine if you can manage your uh, player using these kind of stats knowing how many miles they're actually running in a game give them a, a breathing time a space for breathing time exactly exactly so play, it, it, which it's, is, which it's is great and it also expresses you know how many scoring options run through one player uh like uh the pa- if the ball passes through this player it gives you so many details like if the ball passes like Every time, every time LeBron touches the ball, for example, every time LeBron touches the ball, the percentage of a scoring happening is higher than if he does not touch he the, ball. Touch the ball. Yeah, Those yeah, kind of sense. stats become included, and it's it, it tracks every single movement of every player. I think this 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 camera device is awesome. Yo, when you told me about it off air, I was ecstatic yeah. about. It. I was like, I, I didn't know what it was. You you brought me up to date with it. I yeah. think it's awesome, yo. I think they should do that. Well, the thing is, it it, it, it was used for the first time in two thousand nine. Um, in the last three years, 15 different teams in the NBA purchased uh, the use of these cameras. And now the NBA is deciding to take it upon themselves to install these. On all the teams. On all the teams. Yeah, they want to make sure that this You this think is they'll reimburse that, the teams already bought Well, that's what own. I want to wait and see. I want to see what ends up developing from this move because there's 15 teams that already have it. And they paid for the for it out of their own yeah. team money. So now, what's going to happen if the league is deciding to provide this to the other teams? And uh, and what's going to happen with that? Because you know, there's teams that didn't get because you know they couldn't. They just, they just simply couldn't afford couldn't it. Couldn't afford it because they're smaller market, market teams, teams that yeah. just don't have that kind of money. So now, what's going to be the ne- the next step for these 15 teams that already had purchased the system in the last 15 years? I mean, the last three years. So we're going to wait and see what happens there. We'll keep you guys posted. But uh, know that there's going to be these additional stats available for not only the coaches and the players, but for us, for the, the fans. fan base who wants to know a little bit. Exactly. If you want more intrigued into the game. Exactly. If you want to wonder why uh, some players gassed halfway through the season, well, you, you can why. go look at the stats and you can see how much he's how being you, used. How, how many, many miles they ran half a season. Exactly. So you can see all these little additional details that will help provide so much more uh, and you imagine what this is going to do for fantasy basketball? Oh, yo, it's crazy. And that the 15 teams already use the stats, but these aren't, they're not publicly available. You know, these are stats that the coaches Now they use. will be because NBA is going to authorize it to exactly. be useful. Which is going to be the other thing. How are the teams going to take that now? Because now all their stats is going to be available to the other teams. So all the, all the coaches are going to be like, all right, look, this is what we have to do now. Yeah. I mean, even though I'm pretty sure they already had some of the stats done because whenever those teams came to their Yeah, they had the city. stat sheet ready. They have, yeah. they have percentages. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that, that things out. happened there. But, and uh, they got tape, gonna, too. It's going to be a lot of interesting things going to come out of that topic. Uh, now, moving on, Jay-Z selling his mind, selling his share, his his part uh, of uh, ownership. the Nets ownership in minority uh pieces and one of them is jason kidd is becoming one of the buyers who reportedly bought uh uh one sixth of one percent share worth five hundred thousand dollars dang um and it's not unusual for a coach of a team to own part of the team uh so that's not the thing that's the problem right now jay-z is just trying to get rid of his share his because the conflict of interest is, yeah no or his it's, management it's, no it's technically it's illegal Oh, for is him, it? it's illegal as an agent to be a uh, oh, owner. Yeah, oh, okay. that's illegal. So that's what he needs to do. That's why there's so much investigating going on around him and the agency that he's built uh, for players. So he needs to make sure that he gets rid of those shares ASAP uh, of his his entire share. At least he's a smart dude, man. He really he's a no, no, he is. He's, he's a he genius. Is. Yo, he really is. But he is sometimes trouble always lurks. 
Uh, now, the last topic, Sacramento Kings hired Chris Mullen as an advisor to the GM, Pete D'Alessandro. Not bad. Uh, and I think this is a smart move because uh, Chris Mullins, man, that guy's very, very well detailed with his analysis. Well, yeah. He's uh, very well groomed in the sport. Obviously, he's one of the best players to play. I mean, this Top guy. Top shooters of all time. One of the, yeah, exactly. Even though it was an awkward shot. But, man, that guy can nail it. Had a stroke. I so, meant that. <laughs> so uh, Chris Mullen uh, will be helping out the Sacramento Kings, who really need that kind of help, man, because uh, now that they were able to save their team. The arena, the team. Now they need to finally do something, build up on that. Exactly. Up, exactly. Man. They need something. And Chris Mullen, I believe, is one person that can really help them develop something there because uh, they need it. They really need something to show that uh, it was the right decision to leave Sacramento, well, leave the Kings in Sacramento. In Sacramento. So uh, hopefully Chris Mullen is able to do something Talking to help Talking about that, that like team. leaving teams, man, the city that's suffering the most is Seattle, man. They need the Sonics I, back. Yeah, I feel so bad for Seattle. Yeah, they need the Sonics back, yo. They need something, man. They need something. And the only thing is that they can't add another team. Because, because it'll be, be un- unevenly. They're going to have to add would, two teams now. Exactly. If they're going to do that, they're going to have to add another additional team to uh even out the the, the NBA league so uh well we didn't see what happens there um with this thing with chris mullen see what he does for that team hopefully he has that positive vibe for them that that actually does something good for that team because uh, you really want to see this crowd have a reason to cheer instead of just having to sit and there and they want to allow this arenas in the whole entire yeah. league so yeah they are they are it's just that they have they need something, something really not to, to push now yeah. exactly so we'll wait and see what happens there. But that's really what's going on in the NBA uh, that we wanted to talk about today. Yeah. There's still a lot more stuff going on mm-hmm. in the NBA. And pretty soon we'll be seeing the, the season start. Preseason training camp. We're yeah. like, what, a month and a half away? Yeah, it's yeah. Right it's there, not too the far corner. away. It's not too far away. So uh, we'll, be, we'll be opening up on more topics of the NBA. But remember, you can always let us know what you want us to talk about yep. on Twitter and on Facebook. Just letting us know with hashtag RJV Topics. So we're going to go to a quick break and we're going to come back with a little bit more of what's going on in the world of sports. Crack. Are you looking for a place to promote your product, company, or event? Well, you have found the perfect place. RJV TV is the show for you and whatever you want to promote. RJV TV is one of the fastest growing internet TV shows on the net. RJV TV guarantees results, so don't miss out on this great opportunity. Promote your product, company, or event right here on RJV TV. For more information, call 786 262 4741. 786 262 4741 or email rjv.tvshow at gmail.com. Back here on RJV TV one more time. We're going to jump right into the next topic. Major League Baseball. MLB. What's going on right now? Well, obviously, we're heading into the postseason. Postseason. So we'll be getting into those topics uh, within the next shows. Or two. Yeah, well, you'll see us start talking about it. The season ends at the end of the month. Yeah. So um, we'll be talking a little bit about what's going on and and going into the postseason. But right now, I want to talk about Ryan Braun. Hmm. The name. Braun. Braun. Now, uh, Ryan Braun actually did something commendable. Something that... uh, that was very nice of him to do in this situation that he's currently in. Um, he came to the Brewers organization, approached his team, well, not his team, his ownership, and asked them to give him the information for all the ticket holders, seasonal, part, uh, partial, partial mm. individual buyers. He wanted the information for all the ticket holders, so he can begin to call them individually and personally apologize and have a little, you know, back and forth with them. And uh, a few minutes of his time with these different people. 
Yeah, yeah. He's yeah, and there's been some that had given him the 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 negative feedback. You know that they're not too happy with what he did. But at the same time, a lot of people have that. There's been a a more positive reaction to him doing this uh, than a negative reaction. It's a it's a it's an approach where. One is not; it's rarely seen, well, and yeah. two, it's it, like you said, commendable. Because, dude, for you to to stick your neck out first and lie like the way you did, but then turn around now and not really, literally, just throw yourself out, out there to the wolves, basically, you know, to put your pride down, all down, just to go say, look, I'm taking this step forward. I'm going beyond extreme measurements to show that I feel regretful for what I did, and I even want to apologize. You know, personally, personally, it's not like I'm sending a team notice or letter through a through a lawyer or or an accountant to to no, let or, y'all know. or even do the the um, just a recording a voice recording, message yeah. that gets sent to, to each. Send out to everybody. Yeah. No, this dude is literally picking up calls. Yeah, a phone or to call people. People are yeah. seeing this dude's number pop off. Well, no, on I'm, pretty, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure, sure that, either no. blocked or it's yeah. it's it's they're doing something untracked. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, it's it's, hey, it's wired yeah, a bit where a different number comes of, out. <laughs> if this dude really is going out calling with his number, this dude's gonna have I don't like uh, a thousand voicemails a day. Yeah, time I, I go kill yourself. <laughs> I doubt he's doing that, but uh, but no, he he's gotten a lot of positive reaction out of that. And um, what do you feel about it, that? Uh, well, just to be straightforward about it. It takes a lot of balls, man. It, ta- it takes a lot of balls to really go out and put yourself out in that position because you know he's going to hear it from some of these people. Of course. And he's going to hear some ugly, ugly stuff. And that's the one thing that uh, that they, that the or- uh, the Brewers organization was saying is that we feel like one of the things that he wants to do is that he actually wants to hear the reaction from these fans. He wants to hear the good, the bad, and the ugly. He wants to hear what they have to say. Even the in-between. And it's good for him to hear that because it might be what actually makes a change in this kid because this is a talented, talented guy. Mm -hmm. He's a very good baseball player who did not need any kind of help. Yeah. He just did it because he wanted to do it or because he got peer pressured into it. Whatever the situation is, whatever the truth is, he didn't need it. And that's the one, number one question that these fans have been giving them is why such a talented player had to go to that. Yeah, take his uh, take his talents to somewhere where it didn't need to be taken. Yeah. I mean, maybe sometimes we're, we're, we're stuck in a bottle where we feel like we're not good enough. And maybe he wasn't able to see with with his own two eyes how good he already was. And I guess which is hard to imagine. Right? Exactly, but I mean, you don't know what's going on through this dude's head. So yeah. let's, let's exactly. put that, let's which put is, that in perspective. Yeah, we so. we can't try to dissect either his thoughts, but at the at the end of the day, it was just it was, it was really, unnecessary. It was unnecessary, and it was a stupid decision yeah. by his part at the end of the day. Uh, but yeah, but this was a very very good decision by his part, and apparently, from what's being reported, it was his de- it was it was his idea, and it was his decision to want to do this now. Uh, to believe if it was really his idea, it's gonna be up I, to us. But I, it, to put himself in that position, regardless, it yeah. is still something very, very commendable. I can't fight back with you or argue with you about that or be in disagreement with you because, yo, yeah. real talk, man, I respect that more than than anything. Yeah. Now, so. A Rod, uh, a guy who isn't getting any respect from anybody, uh, he is hearing yeah. to appeal the 211 game suspension will be a day after the regular season ends, September 30th. Um, and that's if the Yankees don't make the playoffs, which, as it is right now, doesn't they're look like they're going like to make, make the wild it. card race. At least they're right there for a wild card, but they're struggling They just right lost now. two back-to-back games. Yeah, they, they've been losing some games. Yeah. So we'll wait and see what happens there. They haven't been looking their best these past few games. Uh, but... Uh, to point out for the next year where he would be suspended 211 games if this appeal doesn't go through he is due to make 25 mil next season and he's due a six million dollar bonus if he ties willie mays for fourth all time on the home run record list and he's nine shy of it as of friday so as of Friday, he's nine shy of tying that record. And regardless of whatever what happens, is, yeah. 
he's gonna get six so million dollars bonus just for tying Willie Mays's record. Now, obviously, if this doesn't happen before the suspension, then he won't get that, he bonus, won't get that bonus after yeah. he's able to play again. If he plays again, well, they did. I mean, the money that the Yankees would lose in releasing him would be very painful. Yeah, I know. So I don't think they're going to do that. They're going to have to eat this contract. Just like uh, Pujols' contract. It's just That's tragedy. Whole, I called it a tragedy in the beginning of it. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, that's it for Major League Baseball. We're going to go to a quick break, and we'll be back after this. We're going to talk a little bit about mixed martial arts. Some MMA is going to be coming up. But remember, we'll be talking some Major League Baseball pretty, pretty soon when this good. postseason kicks in. And we'll be talking about the teams that have made it, the teams that haven't made it. And one topic that I want to talk about is going to be Jose Fernandez, the Marlins pitcher that has become the golden boy of the pitching, of the especially city. of the rookies of the, yeah, the city of the rookies pitching. This guy has been unbelievable. And uh, we're going to wait and see if he actually gets the recognition he deserves. Maybe a Cy, a, Cy, a Cy Young nominee hopefully happens. And we'll see what know. happens there, hopefully. But we'll be talking more about him uh as the shows progress so pay close attention if you're a mlb fan we'll be opening up those topics very very soon uh so with that we're gonna go to a quick break and we'll be back right after this are you looking for a place to promote your product company or event well, you have found the perfect place. RJV TV is the show for you and whatever you want to promote. RJV TV is one of the fastest growing internet TV shows on the net. RJV TV guarantees results, so don't miss out on this great opportunity. Promote your product, company, or event right here on RJV TV. For more information, call 786-262-4741. 786-262-4741 or email rjv.tvshow at gmail.com Back here one more time on RJV TV and we're jumping to the El Octagono segment of this program. On this illness. Now, uh, this segment is brought to you by www.eloctagono.com. Now, I don't know why I always say www, but I just feel the need to need to say it when I'm promoting El Octagono. Uh, but yeah, El Octagono, for all your information when it comes to mixed martial arts, you can go visit eloctagono.com. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. El Octagono, very, very simple to follow. And you can also look up the YouTube channel where we post all our interviews and uh post so many other things uh everything that we get from the ufc promos everything we get from them we post on there too so you can go check that out and uh and enjoy if you're a mixed martial arts fan if you like fighting you're gonna want to check out el octagono because uh we provide all of it now jumping right into the topic anthony pettis heard these words and knew Lightweight champion of the world, Anthony Showtime Pettis. The man submitted Benson Henderson very quickly, <laughs> fairly quickly. First round. Man, it was beyond impressive to see how this kid... I mean, I, I knew he had gotten better. I had already announced... That my prediction was that he was going to win it. Uh, I had no doubt that he was going to win. But you didn't see him winning, submitting so fast. I didn't see him winning it like that. Yeah. No, man. There was no way that I, I could have pictured Anthony Pettis finishing the fight like that. One, Benson Henderson is going to known for submitting. World, no, no. Recognized, world-renowned, known as an unsubmittable opponent. I mean, this guy is Gumby. This guy's arms are like Stretch Armstrong. They just keep on bending and rolling. You cannot submit this guy. I mean, Donald Cerrone, who's very, very good with submissions, could not submit this guy. And he had him in about seven or eight submissions. Tight, locked-in submissions and could not finish the job. But Anthony Pettis, in four minutes and 31 seconds of the first round, 
did all he needed to do by submitting him with an arm bar. And in that arm bar, it was impossible for uh, Benson Henderson to escape in that moment. He had both of his arms locked in. Uh, so he wasn't able to use his other arm to defend himself. At all. And Benson Henderson did the wrong move. He was trying to pull his arm out. And technically in that position, you're supposed to try and stack it up and try and, uh, and so cause... Him, exa- and pulling out bended the, the arm more. No, like you stack on top of your opponent. Yeah. You stack and put all your weight down, causing like, your, giving your arm that leverage so it goes down so you don't get that bend. Yeah. But uh, he was trying to pull his arm out. And that obviously it doesn't work. And no, you, it, you're giving him the advantage, you know, and he gave him the advantage in that situation. And Benson put himself in that position because he's the one that took the fight to the ground, thinking he would be better off there. And Anthony Pettis proved him wrong. And Anthony Pettis, one of the things he kept on saying was, I'm better than this guy anywhere. Dang. Wherever he wants to take it, I'm going to beat him. And man, Benson Henderson thought he was going to have the advantage on the ground, took it there and got caught. Slipping. Yep. Yep. That's what ended up happening. Now, uh, also in this fight card, we saw Josh Barnett in a very controversial victory over Frank Mir. And controversial, not because Josh Barnett wasn't winning the fight, because he clearly was. Frank Mir was getting his ass whooped. Uh, but there was very, very clearly an, an early stoppage in this situation. Uh, he got dropped with a knee to the head. He dropped and immediately, like, it probably took two seconds for him when he dropped to kind of to wake doze up. off of it yeah he dozed off and woke up yeah. immediately now in that situation normally the referee lets it roll to see if he is completely defenseless or if he is completely gone limp this referee did not this referee immediately jumped Stopped in it. pushed josh barnett off and did not allow anything else to continue and by all appearances frank Mir was perfectly well to try and give and either receive a couple more shots and officially get it stopped himself. or defend himself yep. and maybe escape the situation. We've seen Frank Mir in situations like this where he's able to defend himself, take the fight down to the ground, maybe end up in his guard and uh, and end up being able to do something. Or, but or, or backed up against the cage, you know, holding on and, and tugging with this dude. I've seen that before. Yeah, you're right. Exactly. So he didn't get that. that uh, he didn't get that chance. So now uh, we're going to wait and see. Uh, well, we're going to talk about Frank Mir a little bit after this. We finish talking about this fight card, but uh, a very controversial stoppage. I feel like we're going to see that rematch uh, again very soon. Do you think that played an outcome on, on who, who, how he won? Not really, because you just, as you stated, if you felt like, you know, he was winning the fight. Well, Josh Barnett well, was winning. Barnett, Barnett you know, exactly. was winning, yeah. So the stoppage, you feel like the stoppage had nothing to do with influencing the winning of the fight or not? No, no, no. I, I, I think Barnett was winning, and he was probably going to end up winning that fight the way it was going. It's just that, you, I mean, you got to hate. When, seeing a stoppage uh, when, like yeah, that. Seeing a sto- yeah, seeing a bad stoppage. You want to see it play out. You want to make sure, because there's been so many comebacks. There's been so many situations where somebody has gone completely out. Check Congo, Pat Barry. Check Congo was out. Out, dude. Woke not, up and ended up knocking out Pat Barry five punches later. Remember that you told me about that. You told me to go see. You showed me online. One that happened recently. The the last UFC me you saw together at your house. This dude was getting knocked all around. This, this white dude. These these two cats that was going at it. I forgot their name now. Hmm. It was it was that that Saturday. Uh, we had seen it. That um, this dude was completely getting just mopped on against a cage and the floor, getting knees to the chest to the stomach. And then he just turned around and knocked this dude out. I'm trying to remember what uh, what fight card that was. That was the last, the most recent fight card besides Wednesday. This past Wednesday. That had to be... He was tall. Skinny, white dude, bald head. <laughs> I don't remember his name, yo, but it was one of those that made you look at each other like, damn, yo, see, so he came back from out of nowhere. Oh, uh... The Travis Brown and Overeem. Yes, the Overeem. Travis yeah, Brown and Overeem. Overeem, Overeem yeah. looked very clean. He was dominating the the whole uh, the whole thing. And then Travis Brown. Well, yeah, that's that's probably why I wouldn't have recognized yeah. it because Travis Brown. I know him as not being a white boy. I know him as a Hawaiian. Yeah. So kind of off putting for me. But no, uh, Travis Brown. Yeah, he did have a comeback moment uh, in that fight, but it wasn't as bad as I've I'm not seen. Saying, There's yeah. situations that you've seen somebody go out. Yeah. And come back like this 
and win the fight. No, but the reason I brought that up for no, no, as, yeah, as, I know. As it's, most it's, recent it's because comparable. he was getting mocked. Yo, yeah, he, it's comparable in a way. There. It was comparable yeah. in a way. Exactly. That's actually more comparable to the situation between Mir and Barnett. Yeah. Because Barnett was controlling that fight similar, mm-hmm. only Barnett was being more uh, aggressive than yeah. Alistar was in his fight. But um, but yeah, Mir could. You never know. Mir could land that punch. And Knowing that Frank Mir has the strength to land that punch. Yeah, and actually, that something like that happened uh, in the last event that we're going to talk about now. Uh, after this, but I uh, wanted to go on with this fight card, the UFC 164. Uh, Chad Money Mendez beats uh, Clay Guida, becoming the first guy to finish him off in punches. Uh, Clay Guida has never been finished by TKO or KO, uh, and Chad Mendez became the first guy to do it. Uh, in Clay Guida's career. Wow. Um, and man, that kid has power. Puts himself, uh, well, defends his position, his uh, his ranking in the division. Defends himself uh, as being a, t- a title contender in the featherweight division. Even though he's fought for that title and lost it, but showed that he deserves another chance at it. So uh, we're probably gonna be looking into seeing Chad Mendes in that title picture very very soon. Uh, also, Ben Rothwell versus Brandon Vera. Brandon Vera moving up to the heavyweight division. Uh, looked good for the division, but did not really show it. Now, he did continue his Muay Thai style, did include a lot of uh, a lot of his attacks that we all know from Brandon Vera. But Ben Rothwell was very well at defending himself, protected himself very well. And then in the third round, it looked like, I mean, this, it looked like this guy got shot with adrenaline. Because he suddenly, out of nowhere, you see him start going. <laughs> he, he gets so animated, so into it, and all of a sudden he explodes into this barrage of attacks and ends up TKOing Brandon Vera. Ben Rothwell, I, had, I did not believe this guy was going to win the fight. I did not believe that this guy was going to have this in him. I've seen Ben Rothwell. I respect him as a fighter. He's a good fighter. I just didn't think that he was at the caliber for Brandon Vera. And man... He surprised the hell out of me. Something triggered in his head, yo. Something had to be triggered. Well, he was home. It was his hometown, too. Yeah. So that helps. But, man, it was insane. Like, if I show you that replay, it's insane because he suddenly starts, like, shaking his hands. And he starts, like, trying to get... He caught the the ghost at church. He feeds himself (laughs) some crazy amount of adrenaline that just bursts into this bra- almost like a Dragon Ball Z yeah, thing like where he, where he Super raises sane, yeah. up his, his, his energy and suddenly explodes it all uh, and man it was crazy it was very very uh, fun to see man Ben Rothwell went insane he went ham really really ham um, but yeah very fun to see but he ends up beating Brandon Vera in uh, in his return to the heavyweight and uh, beats him in the third round now Dustin Poirier versus Eric Coach was a very very tough uh, matchup because both of these guys are so similar and it was such a great fight man these guys really gave a hell of a battle i thought it was going to be fight of the night it didn't end up get it didn't end up getting it but man it was a great great fight uh dustin poirier picks up the unanimous decision win uh we saw gleason t bow the hometown guy he lives down here in miami or in south florida even though he is brazilian but he does stay down here in south florida uh trains down here uh locally as well uh beats jamie varner by split decision i did feel he got the victory even though he lost that third round terribly because uh as we've been accustomed to see he gasses very easily uh he does shed an insane amount of weight and then puts it back on uh be the night before the fight so it's it's one of those things where to keep his body the way he wants to keep it it's very taxing on his on his tank on his tank yeah so uh that's something that he really wants to work. He needs to work on if he's trying to get into the championship he level. That conditioning, right? Yeah, that conditioning can, will not withstand five rounds yeah. at all. Um, we saw Tim Elliott beat uh, Louis Garnot uh, by unanimous decision. Uh, Hyun Gyun Lim uh, versus Pascal Kraus ended up getting a uh, fight of the night, uh, even though it only lasted one round, three minutes and 58 seconds, but it was one hell of three minutes and 58 <laughs> seconds. It was an insane, insane clash of two guys, and it was a hell of a knockout. Um, so it, it was an incredible, incredible matchup. Now, we also had a bantamweight matchup between Chico Camus versus Kyung Hong Kang, which uh, Chico Camus ended up taking by unanimous decision. 
uh, in the prelim card that was uh, put on Facebook or on YouTube. Um, you had Soy Paleli beat Nikita Krylov by TKO in the third round. Al Quinta beat Ryan Couture by unanimous decision. Magnus Sidenblad beat Jared Hammond by submission with the guillotine choke in the first round. Uh, definitely giving the fans a good start to the show. So all in all, uh, the fight card was an exciting fight card. It was a fun one to watch. Fight of the night, like I said, Pascal Kraus versus Hyungu Lim. Uh, knockout of the night went to Chad Mendez, of course, after he made history, mm. finishing off Clay Guida by punches for the first time in his career. And submission of the night went to the champion, Anthony Pettis, for submitting Benson Henderson with a beyond impressive armbar. Man, you got to see that video, man. That highlight was beyond impressive. Now, we also had uh, UFC fight night after this because the f events just continued. Um, where we had Glover Teixeira face off Ryan Bader in the main event. And Glover Teixeira was in that situation where Ryan Bader was just putting the pressure, Put putting the him, pressure, yeah. putting the pressure, put him up against the cage. And a counterattack from Glover Teixeira, a uh, very, very heavy, heavy, heavy right hand, drops Ryan Bader and Full finishes power. the job in yeah. the first round, 2 minutes and 55 seconds. And after the fight... Uh, it was confirmed by Dana White that Glover Teixeira would be getting the next title shot to whoever wins between John Jones and Alexander Gustafsson. Nice. Now, I like Glover Teixeira. He's a very, very impressive fighter. Fun to see because he packs power and he packs that power to finish fights. So he's a very fun guy to see. But to beat somebody like John Jones or even, well, yeah, or even Alexander Gustafsson. I don't know if he packs enough. The, the, the enough skill sets. And that that I'm not trying to discredit the guy. The guy's a very good fighter. But I just feel like Alexander Gustafsson and John Jones are on a different, a level. different level. The closest one to me that can possibly defeat John Jones is the next person he's fighting. Alexander Gustafsson is the one guy that matches up so perfectly with John Jones that he has that opportunity. I don't believe he's going to do it. But if anybody can do it, it's going to be this guy. I think it'll go full length. That, that fight is going to go full, full length. It's possible. It's, it's very possible. possible. It's very possible to see. Uh, we're going to have to wait and see what happens in that fight card. But, man, um, it's going to be fun to see. But Glover Teixeira well, it very much deserves a title shot. He deserves the opportunity. And, again, you never know what might happen. Yeah. The guy might knock out the champion and yep, become champion. Imagine. It can always happen. Look at Chris Weidman and Anderson Silva. Yeah. Anything can happen. Can happen. Mm -hmm. uh, but either way, uh, that's what happened with Glover Teixeira. Now we also had Ronaldo Souza, Jacare, beating Yushin Okami in the first round uh, by TKO also. Two minutes and 47 seconds into that dominating performance by uh, Ronaldo Souza. So uh, we're going to have to wait and see what happens with him in that middleweight division. Because right now, pretty much all the top contenders are occupied. So we're going to have to wait and see what happens with him because the guy deserves to be in that top uh, five at least or top 10, yeah. top five uh, of the middleweight division to challenge. So we'll wait and see what happens with him. In the flyweight division, we have Joseph Benavides finishing Jusier Formiga very easily. TKO that started with a knee to the body, a brutal, brutal knee to the body that ended with punches and uh, ended in three minutes. Actually, no, it started with the punches. Led to a knee to the body, then finished off with punches. punches. Uh, three minutes and seven seconds into that first round. It was a beautiful, beautiful work by Joseph Benavides. Patient work by Benavides. Uh, we also saw a great, oh my, this this was beautiful. <laughs> Pitor Hallman beats Francisco Trinaldo by submission of Kimura. This guy was getting destroyed in the first round. Dominated, controlled in every single possible way. And this fight card took place in brazil nice francisco trinaldo is brazilian, brazilian so he was getting amped up by the crowd in that first round suddenly the second round comes in and he is nowhere to be found pitor uh piodor piodor let me pronounce that right because i'm saying pitor and the t is after the o piodor um really just showed an insane amount of talent and 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 heart and effort because he came back in that second round like a brand new man Brand new, like nothing had happened in that first round. Nice. It was insane, but he came out and finished the job very quickly in the second round, three minutes and 50 seconds into it, and uh, got the win 
over a hometown Brazilian. Uh, we also had Rafael Natal versus Tor Treng, uh, which ended up getting fight of the night. It was an insane fight. Those guys were going at it on the ground, on the feet, everywhere possible. Those guys gave a war. And Rafael Natal ended up becoming, uh, well, ended up getting, getting the unanimous decision win. Um, also, in the lightweight, in the flyweight division, we had Ali Bagutov, Bagunov face off against Marcos Vinicius, which ended up uh, with a TKO in Ali's favor in the third round. Um, now, knockout of the night went to Glover Teixeira. Submission of the night went to Piero, Piero Hall. Piero. And uh, Farana, like I said, Rafael Natal versus Tor throwing. So other things I wanted to mention, the next fight card coming up is going to be UFC 165, John Jones versus yes. Alexander Gustafson. You don't want to miss this fight card. And uh, these fight cards are, are starting to uh, give us a new different look of UFC posters. Uh, this is the first one to have a different look. And uh, I'm liking it. I'm liking the new look of the posters. Uh, if you guys haven't seen it, you can go ahead and look up UFC 165 yeah. and you'll see the new looking posters. Uh, but this one will take place in Toronto, Canada. John Jones versus Alexander Gustafson. Henan Burrell versus Eddie Wineland. Brendan Shaw versus Matt Mitrione. Costa Filippo versus uh, Francis Carmont. Pat Healy versus Khabib Nurmagomedov. Uh, the prelims, which will be on Fox Sports 1, is Mike Ritchie versus Miles Jury. Ivan Menjavar versus Wilson Reese. Maybe our good buddy Rafael Alcalde will be there cheering on Ivan Menjavar, his uh, fellow salvadoreño. Uh, Chris Clements versus uh, Stephen Thompson. Uh, Mitch Gagnon versus Dustin Kimura. And uh, additional prelim card, which will be on Facebook and on YouTube, is John McDessie versus Renee Forte, Jesse Ronson versus Michelle M- Mikel Prazeres, uh, Roland Delon versus Alex Casares, who will be returning after a suspension for uh, marijuana, and Nandor Gulam versus Daniel Amelakzuk. Hey, I have to try, right? Hey, you're doing a good job. Amelakzuk. And that'll be the next fight card you guys have coming up for UFC 165. Now, the one that was recently announced, and I just want to talk real quick. uh, They added a couple of fights to a certain fight card, UFC 167. Uh, St. Pierre versus Hendrix is the the lead fight for this fight card. But they've added some extremely star-studded fights into this fight card, which include Evan Dunham versus Donald Cerrone. Frank Mir versus Alistar Overeem. And a fight that was requested by Twitter by Chael P. Sonnen, Sonnen, American gangster. Tweeted to Rashad Evans, hey, are you busy on November? Uh, <laughs> will you be, what is it? Are you, will you be busy? Uh, damn. Let me, let me remember. Let me look at the tweet because it was hilarious, man, the way he worded that. It was one of the greatest things I've ever seen. And then this is a guy that I've criticized for some of the lines he's crossed. But, man, he's he's really getting on my good he's side. Good, he's and he goes, hey, you busy November 16? And Rashad replied, no, what's up? And he put up a poster, a UFC poster, where you see Rashad and Chael Sonnen on the, on the top of the poster, Hendricks and St. Pierre on the bottom. On the bottom. And... All Rashad replied was like a little laugh, and then and then he put that sounds like a good idea, and then he wrote, he wrote another one saying I knew you had something you wanted to tell me when we were doing the show because they <laughs> worked together on the Fox yeah. Sports Network at times as commentators, and man it was it was it was great to see I, I mean these two guys are friends they in got a way. good mutual respect for each other yeah mutual yeah, respect. Yeah. But uh, Chael Sonnen, who wanted to fight Vanderlei Silva, but Vanderlei got injured, yeah. uh, wanted to fight anyway. This this is one reason I have to respect the guy. The guy just likes he to fight. He wants to fight, yeah. So he's going to be fighting uh, Rashad Evans on this fight card. Also, Rory McDonald versus Robbie Lawler. Tyrone Woodley versus Josh Koscheck. I mean, this and that's just the main card, that's, man. That's, that's just that's insane. A crazy card. Insane. And this will be going down at the MGM Grand Arena in Las Vegas. Saturday, November 16. Insane fight card. 
But with that, we're going to finish this long, extensive segment of El Octagono and uh, go to a quick break. And we'll be back with uh, some closing stuff that we got to talk about. First NFL and then finish off with a couple of music anecdotes that we need to mention here. So we'll be back after this break. Yep. Are you looking for a place to promote your product, company, or event? Well, you have found the perfect place. RJV TV is the show for you and whatever you want to promote. RJV TV is one of the fastest growing internet TV shows on the net. RJV TV guarantees results, so don't miss out on this great opportunity. Promote your product, company, or event right here on RJV TV. For more information, call 786-262-4741, 786-262-4741, or email rjv.tvshow at gmail.com. Back here on RJV TV That's for that the final funk, segment. Yo. <laughs> yes. Yes. And we're here for the final segment of mm-hmm. RJV TV. We're going to jump right to a quick thing we're going to try and get out of the way, which is music. We're going to be talking about J. Cole's upcoming tour, which uh, kicks off shortly. And then uh, we're going to be talking also very soon. We're going to be uh, uh, talking about Jay Z's. Yeah. Uh, world tour. He's uh, at the UK now. Well, he should be starting the UK soon, and then somewhere. Yeah, he's yeah he's starting the UK first, and then he's gonna, and gonna come, come down and do his the- dates here, and also Kanye is gonna do a tour with Kendrick Lamar, which is yeah interesting as well. So that's an extra an interesting matchup. Uh, see what happens. I'm gonna have to wait and see a couple of reviews of the shows before I make Deciding. a final decision of when they come down here. Uh, but yeah, uh, all those shows swing by Miami as well. Uh, but this show isn't only for Miami, so we won't be only talking about Miami. Yep. But uh, we'll be uh, bringing those world tour dates and those tour U.S. tour dates yep. uh, through the show in the upcoming program. So uh, be on the lookout for that. But now we're going to jump right into what kicked off on Thursday night. Some illy, illy, illy football. Amazing yeah, well, it, it was, football. It was illy on one side. <laughs> Illy football. You digging right now? Peyton Manning. Season kickoff was uh, Denver Broncos <laughs> versus the Baltimore Ravens. And what we saw was Peyton Manning destroy a Ravens defense. That's been total uh, collapse. At least in the second half, he destroyed that yeah. Ravens defense. Um, a couple of things that were interesting happened in this game. First off, Peyton Manning totaled out to seven touchdowns. Uh, I believe the final number was uh, 652 yards, 652 passing yards, if I'm not mistaken. No, nah, it's four something, four something, four something. It was 400 and something yards. Was it? If I believe so, yeah. I don't know. Uh, Maybe it was. I don't want to over-exaggerate over 600, but I believe it was two something. I mean, four something, excuse me. I know it was an insane number of yards. Yeah, it was, it was. But, uh... It was, it was, I believe it was over the 400 mark. You know what's the one thing to point out, though? This man, in one game, is one touchdown short of how many touchdowns Kansas City scored last season. Are you serious? Yes. Kansas City scored eight touchdowns last season. Peyton Manning went 27 for 42 with 462 yards That's and the seven number. TDs. I'm, I confused. You, you, I, yeah, exactly. reversed the number. 462. 462. 462 yards. I know it was an insane number. Uh, a number you know, you normally don't see unless uh, you're talking about, you know, some extreme quarterbacks. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, and then he also in fantasy leagues, he totaled out to uh, 46 points, second highest in fantasy football history uh, next to uh, – uh, I think it was Michael Vick who pulled 49 points uh, in one game one time. So Interesting that you know that. Yeah, it's uh, and, and you're a happy man because you own him in the league that yes, we're facing off in. Uh, man, he did work. For me, in any of the leagues that I'm in, I did not face him in any of them. I'm in a few, 
I was very fortunate to not have him as an opponent, at least not this week. We'll wait and see what happens. But yeah, Peyton Manning had a very, very extremely impressive. He got something uh, to prove. I've been telling you guys at the beginning. He got something to prove this year. No, and he even, brought it out last year. But yeah, but even more to Baltimore that completely yeah. destroyed yep. uh, their, hopes their hopes last, last season, season. You know, uh, Joe Flacco completely demolished. He put work on them last season. Demolished yeah, Peyton yeah. Manning's heart in the last uh, in the last game. Uh, so uh, in this one, Peyton Manning had something to prove. Vengeance wise to Baltimore, and he definitely uh, applied that very well. And uh, the first half, it was after a 34 minute rain delay, which ironically, uh, the power outage delay back to back games for no, no, the the pa- not only that, the power outage delay was 34 minutes. How long do you think the power the, the delay was for the 34 minutes? Exactly, isn't that weird? Yeah, that's weird, yeah. crazy ironics. Beat it to the conspirators. Yeah, exactly. What they they made it it's rain. Illuminati. They made it rain too. Now that day, really? Yeah. They yeah. they brought clouds over for making rain. Yeah. Stop it. Exactly. Nonsense. <laughs> Never know. You know who must be hating life right now? Mm. Tom Brady. Why? Payne Manny was Walker connections been happening. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? I, and I, I pointed out too. You know how many of those Patriots fans were probably laughing their ass off when he dropped that punt return? Yep. At the one yard line, <laughs> but then after that, what happened? He got two touchdowns. Had a good time. No, it was amazing. And actually, he got away with the dropped uh, pass. Yeah, pass too, yeah. That Harbaugh, <laughs> uh, John Harbaugh, didn't uh, throw the flag in for. Shut up. Should have challenged the play, did not. Uh, apparently, there was some kind of miscommunication there, and that play led to a touchdown, and completely led to the devastation of the, of the, oh, the Ravens, the Ravens. At all. Uh, a couple other things that happened in this game. Uh, Jacoby Jones gets taken out by his own player. Oh, yeah. And uh, Michael Orr goes down uh, for the Ravens as well. Two players, two very important players for that Ravens team going Already, down. Already, yo. And, uh, and Jacoby Jones was one of the bigger factors. But Michael Orr, man. Michael Orr is a big factor for them. And ever from the point that he went down. Yeah. And the uh, game got, it yeah. got out of hand already. Uh, so... That was a season kickoff. It was a, a, a complete devastation uh, for the defending champions that uh, received nothing but anger throws from <laughs> Peyton Manning. And that that Peyton Manning said he was slowed down because of the freaking rain delay. Rain delay, yeah. So I imagine if, the, if there was no rain delay, this guy probably could have... At least nine TDs. Imagine that. Damn. I mean, he tied the record... With seven. Uh, with seven. I think the last time it was done was in 1964. Dang, that's a long time. Um, but, man, it, it was it's, it's just insane to see this guy do what he did. But, man, uh, they they completely devastated uh, the Ravens uh, with their seven touchdowns to what the Ravens have. They had, like. The game was, like, well, 40-something, like 20-something. 49 to 27 was the mm-hmm. final score. The Ravens scored in the first quarter. They scored in the second quarter. Um, and they scored in the fourth quarter. Um, so they had three touchdowns and two field goal kicks that they got in. And but, Flacco had two and two, right? Two TDs, two INTs. Uh, well, no. One of the interceptions didn't even go through because he dropped the ball. Oh, okay. Uh, the yeah, there was that pick six. Um, he dropped off in the end. That yeah, that guy dropped yeah. off. That that uh, the player that actually took it dropped it before crossing the line, yeah. and uh, ended up becoming a touchback. And the Ravens ended up getting the ball back. And eventually turned into a touchdown. Yeah, uh, and that was in the fourth quarter. That was in the fourth quarter, but. Yeah, Manning, the the seven touchdowns is just an insane thing to even see, to even imagine that this guy was a... Uh, it looked like he did it easily, too, yesterday. It yeah. It looked easy to him. Yeah, he looked, and he was... He, he was, was having a good time out yeah, there. He was, he was in the best of moods. In the best of moods. But, yeah, that that but that but Ravens defense, you did see... Yeah, it had a lot of holes in it. Uh, wow. Yeah, a lot of things. Ever, I mean, you're talking about they lost uh, Ray Lewis, Ray, they lost uh, Ed uh, Reed. Ed Reed, Lewis. I mean... They lost so many key things in that defense, and you saw. You saw it yesterday. Yeah, you, you saw definitely it saw it. Uh, also, moving on, Tebow 
Tim Tebow turns down an offer from a team, an unnamed team, uh, because they requested him to change positions. So he is remaining very stubborn and hard-headed and on his... And confident that he's a QB. Yeah. So, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, at, this, at once, you got to respect the guy because he feels that that's the position he's confident he should enough play. And he's good yeah. enough. Yeah, that's good. Uh, but at the same time, how do you turn down any kind of NFL agreement right, right now? Right now, when, you need something. You're supposed to eat. I mean... No, not even to eat because I don't, I don't think he has that issue. But you want to remain in the league. You don't exactly. want to have to take a year off. Or go to the CFL. Ooh. Yeah. It's ugly. Yeah, you definitely don't want to do that. Uh, but we have to wait and see what happens with Tim Tebow because this, this is very awkward to see him, you yeah, know, make that kind of decision, that. you know? Yep. Uh, but, hey, it is what it is, right? Um, EJ Manuel wins the starting job for Buffalo. Even though he just had a minor procedure on his knee. On his knee. Uh, but it was well enough to recover and be ready for week one. Geno Smith, um, by practically... No other choice. No other choice and Rex Ryan's bad decision making yeah. because he felt the preseason game was so worth it. To put Mark uh, Sanchez in the last quarter of the game. Uh, yeah, that, one of the most ridiculous decisions any... Any coach. coaches made, yeah. Like, I mean, I don't know how you put in your supposed starting QB at the end of a at the end of a game, game because you want to win the preseason game. It's about winning in the preseason. That's ridiculous. I don't know. Uh, those I guess games. What, I guess what comes from the preseason carries on to the season, right? No, no, no. no. Uh, but yeah, so <laughs> Geno Smith uh, gets the starting job at least for now. Uh, we'll have to wait and see how uh, he does once it kicks into gear. Because uh, you never know. If he has a good showing, then he might keep that yeah, job. He might keep that job, yep. So we'll have to wait and see what happens there. Now, um, there was also the situation with the read option. There was a ruling by uh, the NFL when it comes to the read option. And um, Jim Harbaugh is obviously not happy with it. But uh, the way you're reading into this read option is uh, pretty much saying the quarterback can be hit like a runner until he's clearly out of the play. And uh, so, how are you supposed to protect the quarterback? Well, that's that's part of Harbaugh's uh, 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 response. response yeah. Harbaugh's response to it was, I believe that when a quarterback is handing a ball off or faking a ball in the read option case, he's reading of a, he's reading on an option play, and he's as defenseless as a quarterback who is in act of throwing. So, with that being said, it makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah. Yes, it does make sense, but there has to be some kind of defense applied to that to to because you know to, to fight take the, off. the read option. Yeah. Yes, and the read option was the main uh, problem for a lot of teams last year. I mean, that's what destroyed the Packers when they faced off the 49ers. Yeah. The Seahawks used it very much as well. The Redskins used it so many times. I mean, so many of these young quarterbacks that can run. They used it to the advantage. Yeah, exactly. You know, and the read option became such a useful tool for these teams. But uh, there has to be uh, some kind of defense. Strategy uh, applied to it. Yeah, there has to be some kind of allowable defense yeah. that can that can permit a team to defend them against that kind of uh, play. Um, and the NFL, you know. They, now you're just going to have QBs running around all day picking up seven, five, seven yards. Yeah, every play and get it every t- every first down they can. So you know, it's weird. So, I mean, well, the read option it plays in the way. You know, I mean, it's either he's gonna pass the ball, hand the ball off, or he's gonna fake it, or whatever he's gonna do. But uh, uh, it really does uh, cause a lot of trickery yeah, uh, for the defense and all that. So allowing the defense to hit a quarterback like a runner in the read option play. That's where that plays in, because I mean, how you have about to treat him like he's either gonna be running, running himself yeah. or handing the ball off. Uh, but like, if he's running himself, I mean, we've seen what Colin Kaepernick can do. Yeah, he's so, a beast. Exactly, and we saw what RG three can do. I mean, RG three can do it. I mean, we have to see how he comes back from this, from his surgery. But all in all. There has to be some kind of defense allowance a lot, uh, for that situation, something you allow in that situation when it comes to the read option. Uh, so there's a little a little 50-50 going on here, but Jim Harbaugh definitely feels like it's flawed and biased. 
So he obviously feels like his QB is being put in a bad position in this situation, which is good to see somebody defend their yeah, quarterback. But at the same time, uh, he's also very being. He's being biased himself too. Well, not being biased, but just being just being a little. I don't want to use the word. <laughs> I see the word you want to uh, use. Moving on, uh, Aaron Hernandez. We'll finish off with this. Aaron Hernandez pleads not guilty uh, to all charges and does not request a bail release. Um, now the attorneys are saying that they believe the only reason that the defense didn't request a bail is because they feel like if they request a bail, then um, all the evidence that's already in for him gets reintroduced again, and they don't want that to... To prolong. No, no, not to prolong, to continue to be shown. Oh. Uh, Because they're... uh, Obviously, they're trying to build a case against the evidence. So they don't want that to continue to be viewed okay you know and put out there so uh that's their view towards why um aaron hernandez uh legal team did not request any bail but he did plead not guilty in other words they're trying to build a case to get him exonerated from all these charges so it's going to be very interesting to see what comes out of this whole entire situation with aaron hernandez because what happens if he does get exonerated i mean if he pulls off an oj (laughs) I mean, and that, that again, the mountain of evidence that existed for OJ was there. It was there. Um, and handled poorly to the point where he ended up getting acquitted. In this situation, what happens with Aaron Hernandez? Because if he gets acquitted, if he gets exonerated, this guy is very well young enough to go back to the league. Mm-hmm. What team will, we, will be willing to take this guy? Um, and... You know, what will his life be like? I mean, in that situation. It'll be a wake-up call. I hope so. Then, uh, well, I mean, I get that. But, I mean, well, then again, yeah, Ray Lewis was another one in a similar situation. I mean, we don't know all the facts. We know what was put into the facts. In, uh, you know there's cameras here, right? Money. Okay. Money money gets you. You know, you're doing hand things. signs. Money gets is, you is a lot Isn't going to stay... Uh, no, but I mean, <laughs> aside from that, aside from the money factor, uh, it was very poorly handled as well. No, I dig. It was very poorly handled as well. Uh, we don't know if Ray Lewis was the one who was stabbing or any of that stuff. We don't know exactly what happened. We only know what was put out there put for, out us, there to see, evidence, for yeah. us to see. And what we saw was a bad case being handled. Yeah. Uh, they, handled it, they handled it very poorly. And it ended up with uh, Ray Lewis being walking. a free man, pretty much walking free like nothing, and ended up coming back to you know win a Super Bowl. <laughs> uh, but at the end of the day, we have to wait and see what happens here, man, because it's going to be very interesting to see what kind of case uh, Aaron Hernandez and his legal teams put together to to fight all the evidence, the mountain of evidence that's there for Aaron Hernandez. Because man, it, it's piled up, man. There's so many things against this guy in this case. Six counts on things and this and that. Well, I mean, just the evidence alone, yeah. man. Every every single shred of proof of anything is just so damaging. And on to top his of that, case. one of his dudes is snitching too. So yeah. we're talking. So we have to wait and see what happens in this case. But at the end of the day, that is what's going on in the NFL. It's gonna continue on. This season's gonna be a fun one. We'll be talking a lot about uh, what's going on through the season. We'll be throwing in some fantasy stuff in here. A lot of it, too. Uh, I'm going to try and get some fantasy experts to come in and talk a little bit about that. And we'll be doing a lot more uh, football stuff uh, through this season, just like we did on the sports piece. Uh, when football season kicked in, we covered a lot. A lot of football. Yes, a lot of football. So we'll be getting into that a lot. Uh, and we'll be starting our picks very soon as well. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of things, so pay attention out there uh, and enjoy uh, what we bring you here on RJV TV. Remember, you can follow us on, on Twitter at RJV underscore TV. You can like us on Facebook, and uh, we also opened up a feed. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we're doing a lot of things. We're trying to make ourselves available to you guys everywhere, every single way possible, and you can communicate with us and, and let us know what you want to hear here on the show. 
And remember always hashtag yep. RJV topics. That's how we look for all the details you guys give us. Ask us any questions, you know, anything you want, you want us to talk, talk about. about the topics, anything you guys want to hear from us. Let us know on RJV topics, hashtag RJV topics. And uh, we'll be getting into those. So with that, we're going to be closing out today's show. This was Randall Villafane accompanied by Mr. Armando Bless Rodriguez on RJV TV. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next program. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom.